of the whole life was trying to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It started with the young age, early age, when his father paid full attention and you can say really devoted himself to the tarbiyah of his son. After Shaykh al Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi was grown up, one day one of the mashayikh, Hazrat Rai Puri rahmatullahi alayhi, asked Mawlana Yahya Saab rahmatullahi alayhi, the father of Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Zakariya rahmatullahi alayhi, he asked him to come and spend the Ramadan with him. He said, Now, now I can. Up to now, I was tied with the chains of Zakaria because raising him properly in the proper environment. Now he has grown up. He doesn't need me to be around him at all time. So now I would be able to come and spend Ramadan with you. And not to say, don't please go back and use this excuse to your sheikh now. Oh, we know, we know these tricks. That, you know, one Mawlana came from America, he was saying that because of raising the children, Mawlana Yahya didn't go to his, his, that sheikh. So I'm also still spending my time with children to do the tarbiyah and raise my children. No, no, that's not the Mawlana Yahya Saab, rahmatullahi alayhi, himself was a great sheikh. A person who used to recite 30 to 35 just on daily basis, just like this while he's traveling from here and there. And as the Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, I have seen two people in my life that used to cry during the night time the way a child cries who's being beaten up very badly. I have seen two people crying like that in my life. One was my father, Mawlana Yahya rahmatullahi alayhi, the way he used to cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night time was just like a child cries when he's being beaten up at that time. And the second was Harat Madni rahmatullahi alayhi. So he himself was a great sheikh and then he's around Harat Saharan Puri rahmatullahi alayhi, Mawlana Khalil Ahmad Saharan Puri rahmatullahi alayhi at all times. The other sheikh would like to have his company and inviting him to spend some time with him over there so that sheikh feels that I will get the barakah of him being with me. So this is the type of father that raised sheikh al-hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. And really, if we just go into this topic of how he raised him, we will be spending our whole session in that. Amazing things. Many of us may still have our parents around. And for our benefit, it's worth it to know few things. How Mawlana Yahya rahmatullahi alayhi was treating his son, Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. And what was the response on the other hand from his son? Very important things to know. And I suggest everyone to read A Biti of Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. It's translated in English too. Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi says, when I was young, almost three years of my age, imagine what's a three years old boy? Had he can walk. He says, my mother made a small pillow for me that I always used to keep with me, keep with me at all times. That was his toy. And I loved my pillow. One day my father called me and said, Zakaria, bring the pillow. So I said to him, Dad, you need my pillow? He says, come here, come here. So I went to him. He grabs both of my hands with one hand, and then slaps me so hard on my face, that you are calling it your pillow? What do you mean my pillow? Did you earn it? Did you earn the money with, with, through which you bought that pillow? He says that was the day that 
since that day on I never considered anything in this life mine. Remember, your slapping will not do that work. And we don't have the sons that will do, will think that way. So therefore, don't do that. But this is for us to know what type of environment he was raised in. What made him to be whatever he was and he became. Many eyes that have seen him, we are not talking about history of thousand years ago. We are thinking of a man that many of us have seen with our own eyes. In fact, I might be one of the youngest person who did the bayah on his hand, had the pleasure of doing that, but many of you spent Ramadan with him. You spent time with him, mashallah. Adrat rahmatullahi alayhi says, Up to the age of 17, I was not allowed to talk to any stranger. And not only just strangers, any person with the exception of two or three that he had named to me, that these are the two, three people that you can talk to, other than these people, you are not allowed to talk to anyone else. Why? I'm sure we understand the point, that whatever you hear has an effect on you. Whatever we say has an effect on our life. Every time, everything a person does, anything in his life has a great effect on this person's life. When you have a son or a daughter after having a child, what's the first thing that you do? What is one of the first things that we do? Call Adhan. In the ear of the child. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are telling us the effect these words have on children's life. That as soon as the child is born, let him hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Let the child hear Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. It's the effect on the child's life. Is not just to earn some reward, we are calling the other. You can call it without having a child in your hand, still you will get the reward. No, this is for the effect that this thing will have on the life of this child. And many times our children are spoiled because they hear Adhan once in their life, then the rest of their life they are hearing TV, that, or that music over there, and nonsense that's coming over there, day and night. Their babysitters are sitting with them in front of that TV. This is all they hear, they grow up, they get spoiled. We go to Sheikh, Mashaikh, Muftis, complain, Taweez and this and that, all of these du'as and none of them is working. Oh, I don't know, I think it's some effect of a jinn. Let's go and find what's, uh, someone who can treat the jinns. And we are looking for those people. Believe me, there is no other jinn than but yourself. who have put the child in that environment throughout his life, that was the jinn. That's the effect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, call the adhan so that we learn that first lesson in our life, that make sure that he hears only the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but throughout the life child is hearing all the other things, never gets the chance to hear that thing from his parents. So up to the age of 17 is not allowed to talk to any person. He says, one day I performed salah beside a person. And so happened that next salah that person was beside me again. So my father called me after the salah. He says, who is that person? I don't know. And beat me up so badly that you perform salah with the same person two times and you're telling me you don't know the person. It must, it must be someone that you know. This is why you're doing salah again and again beside that person. Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, Since that day on, whenever I used to every salah, I would look who is beside me on both sides. And if the same person will happen to come and stand beside me in the, saf, in the next salah, I will break my salah and go somewhere else. 
This is how he's paying attention to the therapy of his son. 